Does HRT cause cancer? It's the first question many patients will ask after discovering that they need hormone replacement therapy. Many of your patients will be suffering from many different symptoms of the perimenopause or the menopause and may not even know that's what the problem is. When they find out the solution, the first thing they will do is ask Google, does HRT cause cancer? And there's a very important reason for this we're going to discover in this episode. We'll break down the original data that caused this to come to the fore, but also help you guide your patients to give them good advice so that they can get the best possible solutions for their specific situation. Many of our patients will be suffering from a myriad of different important symptoms, from mood swings to severe psychological distress, anxiety, depression, inability to cope at work, brain fog, relationship problems. These are really profound challenges that lead on from a deficiency in hormones. And yet many of them will not have the correct treatment because they happen to Google on the wrong day, does HRT cause cancer? They find an answer of yes, and then they miss out on all the enormous benefits of accurately and appropriately treating hormone deficiency in the perimenopause in particular. In this episode, we're gonna break down the original study that caused all the confusion. There was a study done many years ago that was then responded to by the press that caused a huge amount of unnecessary fear in the public. Still today, if you Google to find more about this question of does HRT cause cancer, you will find incorrect results that scare patients away from the solutions that they need. So let's have a look at what this study did and why we cannot apply its results to our patient cohort. I'm Dr. Tim Pierce, and I'm building a longevity clinic to help patients live happy, healthy lives. And if you want to follow me to learn how to do the same for your patients, or if you're a patient who wants to learn more about the topic of longevity, then make sure you follow. The story starts with the Women's Health Initiative. This enormous randomized control trial discovered some important things about HRT, but also made some incorrect conclusions that were applied to a different population. The first thing is this trial was enormous and therefore carries a lot of potential weight in terms of how seriously we would take the results. But like any study, it needs to be interrogated in terms of whether its population really does reflect the population that we are likely to treat. The biggest problem with this trial was the patient cohort. Whenever you look at a clinical trial, it's important to ask yourself, does the patient cohort being tested reflect the patient cohort I want to apply this information to? And this is where it falls apart. In fact, the average age in this trial was well over 60. This is not the age where most of us would start HRT on our patients. It's long after they've been menopausal for many years. So we are already talking about a cohort of patients who are not the cohort that we tend to treat. And this is particularly important, it turns out, when it comes to hormone replacement therapy. Because the time at which you start hormone replacement makes a big difference to the outcomes and the benefits of the therapy. So there is a new idea which emerged from these studies which seems to point out that it matters enormously when HRT is started. In fact, it can have a completely different effect when applied to different age groups. If you identify a patient in need of hormone replacement therapy when they are younger and more recently diagnosed, you get significant benefits and actually the total opposite if you do the same when they are older. In fact, the same thing that HRT can prevent, it seems to be a risk factor for when the patients are older. So this makes it very important that we know who we are treating and take data from the right trials and apply it to the right age groups. Really what we're looking for from our perspective, particularly if you are running a skin clinic, is you tend to be treating patients in their 40s and early 50s. And this is actually the right age group where you get maximum benefits rather than older people who are often maybe at greater risk of some of the comorbidities we are trying to avoid. Understanding this timing hypothesis is critical to understanding the data that we apply to our patients. So is there really a significant link between HRT and cancer? The first piece of information I think we need to take on board is our total lifetime risk of cancer. In fact, it's rather depressingly around 43% if you're a woman and 45% chance of cancer if you're a man. Your chance of breast cancer is about one in eight if you're a female. Now this is critically important to understand the relative increase in risk that might come about through hormone replacement. In fact, the number comes out at around one in a thousand. If you consider your overall risk of one in eight, and increasing that by a risk of one over a thousand, it's essentially insignificant. It is an irrelevant change in your total risk, given that we all already have a risk of one in eight. 
Remember when you test a cohort or a population, you're actually bringing on many different confounding factors. And the biggest confounding factor of all is age. We know with longevity science that aging is the number one risk factor. If you examine an age group and they tend to be older by even a few years, you're dramatically increasing a risk factor that's actually more powerful than the thing you're actually testing. So hormone replacement is what we're interested in, but what we actually ended up doing is testing the effect of age. Age itself is the primary risk factor. This appears to be the error that seemed to increase the apparent risk of using HRT. It was actually the fact that the cohort of women being tested were in their 60s, which is automatically going to increase those risks. To make it really clear about how much this study has confused people, let me give you a black and white example. There was a conclusion from the WHI study that cardiovascular disease would be increased if you took HRT. In fact, the DOP study has found exactly the opposite. And this is down to looking at the correct age groups and applying the information to the correct cohorts of patients. The WHI study concluded there would be an increase in cardiovascular risk for women, whereas the DOP study found a 50 to 30% reduction in cardiovascular disease. And what's the problem here? It's the issue with the cohort age groups. When you measure older people, the confounding factor of age confuses your data. And in fact, in younger women, they established that you will actually see a reduction in total cardiovascular risk when those women are treated at the right time. The sad thing is some patients are still missing out on HRT because of these conclusions which have been spread far and wide because they are fear-based. What you can do as a clinician is bring more up-to-date information to your patients to make sure they get the treatment that will actually help them and remove the blockers, the incorrect beliefs that they may have down to this misinformation so that you can help your patients achieve a happier, healthier, longer life. The DOP study was the first randomized control study on younger women, and this showed and confirmed with the prospective studies there will be a reduction in cardiovascular risk, which is a great thing to tell your patients who are concerned about the risks of HRT in younger women. So what should your patients know about the risk? The first is that in younger patients, it is exactly the opposite of what was put out in terms of cardiovascular risk. There is a reduction in cardiovascular risk in younger patients treated with HRT. The second is in terms of cancer risk. It seems that the total risk has been massively overblown by the media. If you'd like a download with all the studies that have formed this interesting and important story for your patients, or if you're a patient yourself who wants to learn more about it, make sure you see the description in this video.